Good morning, my name is Cristina and I'm gonna show you our work called DNA barcode cap analysis of mesopelaic fishes in Europe. So mesopelaic fish are inhabitants of the twilight zone, which is the upper layer of the deep sea, around 200 and 1000 meters deep in the water column. And the important fact regarding these animals is that recent research suggests that these fish represent 90% of the world total fish biomass. If we combine these high estimations with the increasing human demand, mesopelagic fish turn to be a promising resource providers of food, pharmaceutical products, etc. These fish are characterized by a behavior that is called dial vertical migration. So during day, these animals stay in the mesopelagic ecosystem. At night, instead, they migrate upwards in the water column, reaching the epipelagic zone, where they feed on prey. Later, with the sunrise, they return to deeper layers where they release their pellets. Due to this migratory activity, mesopelagic fish take part in oceanic carbon cycles, sequestrating carbon and nitrogen in the surface and enhancing their sinking. These organisms remain one of the least investigated components on open ocean ecosystems, and their unregulated exploitation may impact their global functional value. So this way, filling knowledge gaps regarding mesopelagic fish biodiversity and biology has become a priority before thinking about exploiting them. However, Studying mesopelagic ecosystem is challenging due to required effort and environmental conditions such as pressure being traditional methods unsuitable for this ecosystem. So new technologies are emerging as potential solutions such as environmental DNA based methods. Environmental DNA is the genetic material obtained when taking environmental samples and its main advantage is that environmental DNA sample, sampling provides genetic material of macroorganisms not present in the sample itself. So this study is focused on assessing availability of genetic material for metabarcoding studies focused on mesopelagic fishes in Europe. This way, the first step has been to create a complete and up-to-date checklist of mesopelagic fish in the study area. This is very important because metabarcoding studies rely on the accuracy and completion of the database that they use. And the second step has been the gap analysis itself. So in order to create a checklist, we chose FISBase as main information source for being the fish reference database and for providing information such as geographical distribution, taxonomy, deep ranges of the species. Information was later completed with species found in several surveys of the Mediterranean and North Atlantic, and also a bibliographic review was carried out as a check. So to determine whether a species was mesopelagic, we chose the family criteria described by the FAO in 1980. And they identified 30 mesopelagic families, although taxonomical changes have grouped them into 25 nowadays. Once a species list was created, sequence availability was analyzed and it was done in gene bank. The genes selected were the most common genes in metabarcoding studies, that is the Thetochrome oxidase subunit 1, the 12S and the 16S ribosomal RNA, and Thetochrome B. And four of them are mitochondrial genes, which are most common used in metabarcoding for being more abundant. So our first result was the, the diversity checklist 
of course, to do a mesopelagic fish checklist, we had to do a general checklist. And here we can see a phylogenetic tree representing the 276 families found in all the European marine regions. And the red points represent the 25 mesopelagic, uh, mesopelagic fish families. We can see that mesopelagic fish is not a monophyletic group which is an interesting information. And also within the families, all the species diversity is very heterogeneous because we have the most rich species families, which are the Stomidae with 88 species and the Myctophidae with 78 species within, within them. Also, we have other families such as Gonostomatidae with middle ranges of species, 18 in this case. And then we also have some families with only one species, such as Anoploasteridae. Later, the gap analysis itself. Here we can see that the highest coverage was found for the Koi gene. Then the second best cover gene was the 12S, then the 16S, and the lowest coverage was found for the cytochrome B gene. The bar plots so the variable size of multiple records. When we say that we have a multiple record, we want to say that that species has more than one sequence. Single records have only one sequence for each species, which are represented with the first plot, uh, sorry, in the first bar of each plot. And we also can see variable sizes of the multiple records. If we realize for Koi 16S and Cytochrome B, we have a very small proportion of fishes that have a high amount of records, around more than 100, more than 50 and so, and these species are all commercial. So that's the logical explanation for these values. So a deeper analysis of mesopelagic uh, families, so reliable information regarding sequence availability. Light dots represent single records, and darker dots represent multiple records. So within the most species-rich families, Stomidae shows a low coverage for Koi and 12S without any record of 16S nor cytochrome G genes, whereas Myctophidae show almost complete coverage of Koi gene and median coverage of 12S and 16S. In general terms, Koi gene is the one with the best coverage for all families. If we take into consideration which species are migrating ones, the ones that do the vertical migration, we can see that the least represented ones are the Stomidae, as previously said, and also because they have the highest number of species within this family. And also Gonostomatidae, Sternoptichidae and Argentinidae are well represented. Okay, so within Koi gene, the two most common barcodes are Folmer and Lerai because when, mm, when we do metabarcoding studies, we don't use the whole gene, but some sort regions instead, which are called barcodes. And koi sequences were available for 210 species. And from these species, 202 showed match for Folmer and 204 so match for Lerai which is a high barcode coverage for both barcodes for these mesopelagic species. 
However, these barcodes amplify for metasomes are unconsidered even universal for eukaryota. So they are not specific barcodes. In the 12S gene, which was the second best represented, the two most common barcodes are teleo and mythids. So there were sequences of the 12S gene for 154 species out of 20, 280. And the teleo and mythids match for 151 species and 141 species. So this also means a high coverage for both barcodes. In this case, both teleo and mythids have fish as target. Why is this so important? These graphs are part of an empiric analysis that my research team is working currently on. And here we can see that when using a koi gene barcodes, which are not specific, the highest proportion of detections correspond to arthropoda. And there is just a small fraction of detections that correspond to chordata. And we think chordata we have most of the detections for actinopter E, but still, if taking all together, fish only represent 2% of the detections. Instead, if using 12S barcodes, which are specific for fish, such as teleo, we can see that more than 99% of detections correspond to fish. So if we compared the detection levels of both kind of barcodes, we can see that it really matters. And this may lead to less and more efficient effort for future work. And also we might be more interested in focusing on 12S gene, which is less covered than koi gene, but still maybe more interesting. Still, when analyzing inter and intraspecific distances of these 12S gene barcodes, we can find some sequences that are equal for different species and some different sequences for the same species. Now we are working on these results, but there are some possible explanations for these results. The first one is some kind of error with the database. And the second explanation probably is that some limitations exist for these barcodes. It might be specific for fish, but may be not accurate enough for really close species, such as, gene, the, such as species of the same genus. We are working on it now. So the main conclusions of our gap analysis is that the most common genes for metabar coding are available for 25, 50, 42, and 25% of the species. That barcode coverage shows noticeable differences among mesopelagic fish families. Also, the most common barcodes may not be specifically designed for fish resulting in diluted mesopelagic diversity as they don't allow to be to, to, to gather enough information with that small proportion. And also that each barcode provides a specific discriminative power to distinguish among closely related species. We hope that this work will help in future effort assessment for these uh, not well understood animals. Thank you for your attention.